A new NFL season kicks off tonight, which is a reminder that there are still a lot of things wrong with the league. First and foremost, the safety of players. There's something perverse about a league in which players are brutalizing each other every week, causing lasting brain damage to many, all so that 32 owners can rake in profits. Add in the fact that the NFL has a majority of African-American players, yet not a single African-American owner, and it's even more messed up. And yes, some players do get contracts that set them up for life, but the vast majority who make it to the NFL last fewer than four years there and will need to find a new job afterward, and many walk away broke and broken. And putting aside that deep moral problem with the game, it's also become bad to watch. Too many rules, too many penalties, too many starts and stops, bad officiating, and way too many television commercials. Now, will I keep watching that garbage later tonight? Probably because I hate myself. Although the demise of the NFL could be nigh, particularly after this news came out at the end of last month, that the league is now opening its doors to private equity. For all its many faults, credit to the NFL that it was the last major sports league, heck, the last nook of the economy, that prohibited P.E. vultures from entering. That changed recently when owners voted to approve allowing private equity firms to take minority ownership stakes in their teams. There are limits for now, but it's only a matter of time before those are blown off too. Only about a half dozen firms have been approved to do this sort of business with NFL teams. They include PE behemoths like Blackstone and the Carlisle Group. For now, they're limited to owning up to 10% of a team, and each firm can only have ownership in a maximum of six teams. Together, the approved private equity firms control over $2 trillion but they'll be limited to investing only $12 billion in NFL teams at the start. Owners claim the point of relaxing the ban on private equity investments is to give them access to more cash, whether it's to renovate facilities or build new stadiums. Also, with the cost to purchase an NFL team now soaring, worth more than $5 billion on average, allowing potential buyers to raise capital through PE firms will make it easier to buy and sell clubs. But what this will also mean is that teams will have yet more hungry capitalists at the table to feed, more people who will expect increasing returns on their investments, which, if things go south, could force teams to start squeezing their budgets, which will likely fall hardest on fan experience. In a perfect world, the NFL probably wouldn't exist. In a close-to-perfect world, it might exist, but the teams are owned by their municipalities, by the public, and are accountable to that public. Instead, we live in this world, though, and the same exact private equity scumbags who are currently destroying the journalism industry, the real estate industry, energy industry, and retail industry now get to feast on American football. Honestly, the league probably deserves this ending. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.